All right, OTBAM, it's Shane and myself, and delighted to say we're joined in the studio by Paul Galvin. Paul, how are you going? Hi, guys. How's the form? Shane. Good, thanks. Keep you are on brand, oh, looking God. sharp. Yeah, that's sure. I was having a little look <laughs> before we come on there. The, territory. the lines. We could have made I'm, glad, effort, I'm glad, I'm glad, um, no. I'm glad Cullum isn't here because I've seen him wearing it a few times. He wears them a lot to be a cla- fair brand fair, clash. Fair, good, fairness to him. Good marketing ambassador for you. Yeah, we'll talk more. The, uh, I, have, I have the shoes, actually. A pair, pair of the shoes. Yeah. The, the, uh, the, the, it was launched this week? Well, yeah, probably a couple of weeks on the go now, but we kind of launched some content this week in that, yeah. So, uh, sorry. So, yeah, yeah. The linesman, the linesman, uh, groundskeepers and the pitch lines. I find a little bit of interest in the pitch lines. And there's, yeah, there's just an element of sport, there's an element of design in sport that gets probably, uh, is under maybe appreciated, maybe, you know, pitch lines in being a, an example. Uh, there's design, a lot of design in sport, footballs and jerseys and even the pitch so. uh, how does that stuff strike you when you're like you're at a game one day and you're like geez, that's that's interesting I'll hone in on that a bit or how do you walk in the field probably I'd say coaching actually probably right. I like to use the lines I, I like to use the lines for coaching and I think that's what it was actually yeah. do you mean the way the, the white paint or the way the grass is cut the, the, the line the line the, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. remember the Rebox so like, dimensions the one. dimensions yeah. and the there's lots of shapes and dimensions and you see pitches getting cones and poles and decorated yeah. with cones and poles and it's already measured out very nicely okay. for all the little small sided games and drills and all that. Yeah. And I, it was actually it was actually true use of the lines for coaching that the lines became more 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 uh, I became more conscious of them and the fact that li- they're literally measured and 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 um, proportionally. I would have always used them over the years anyway. I would have always been conscious of the proportions of a GA pitch mm. and and the proportions of uh, of clo- in terms of clothing and suiting and. They're both are made to measure, you know, like a suit is made to measure, a pitch is also made to measure. Mm. And groundskeepers really were designers in a way. That was my thinking anyway. Listen, I won't, I won't, no, I won't, no, be, I like I won't be dying on that hill. I like but, it. I like it. Um, it was, um, but using the lines for coaching is a great, I find great. And I think it gives the players a great understanding of the pitch as well and position. It's a natural, the natural markings of that. Do you, do you, is it an overstretch to say you're, you, it always feels like you're very passionate when you're talking about coaching. Do you love it? Do you? I must say I do. I do, I think, yeah. Yeah. I really do. I re- well, I just I don't know. I really enjoy it, and it's it's something that, uh, and I I, 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 I f- yeah it occupies me. You know, and I if, if if I feel that way, it's the same with the professionally. If I feel that way about a thing, it doesn't cost me anything to. This is a stupid question, but what what do you love about it? Um, to trying to trying to improve players and trying to improve teams and and there's a creative aspect for me like there's a, for, for me personally there's a kind of a creativity to it mm. um so i don't really know what it is precisely except for the fact that i think it's the trying to see if something will work to improve a player mm. i also like the idea i like uh, watching games as well i i just mm. really like watching games that gives me a bit of enjoyment as well so it's a bit of R and D, I think. I'm in kind of an R and D phase at the moment. Where I, I love to watch and look for things, and then try to implement those things. Or do you watch? Do you pick up bits, tidbits, and info from other sports? The the likes of, you know, managers in football, or even the mechanics of the way a golfer might think, or or do you? Like, I guess it's a psychological question as well. In some ways, that you you kind of pick up little bits, not just from GA managers, but from coaches in other sports as yeah, well yeah definitely you'd always be looking at other sports for kind of um, commonalities and that like in listening to other coaches like I love to listen to, to Ronan O'Gara mm-hmm. uh, I find him very interesting to listen to and rugby there are, I, I'm not a huge rugby fan but there are elements of rugby I find very in, in, interesting from the point of view of, of, of GAA soccer I think has a little has a lot actually mm-hmm. I think soccer has a lot I think I think Gaelic football has a lot to learn from soccer I think soccer is underappreciated the intelligence of soccer players is under and the fitness of soccer players I can tell you from having done a little bit I did a little I did a few days in Sunderland years ago mm. and I'll tell you what when you when you get in amongst those fellas at that level, I'm serious, and they and they and they were Sunderland's level. They were Premier League at the time, but mm. I mean they weren't the top Premier League side. But I think soccer players have an IQ and a brain power that is underappreciated, and they have a fitness as well that's underappreciated. We uh, we will talk football in a second, but on the Ronan bit, um, he speaks to us because we're simple, and he speaks to us in simple terms. And it's a lot about not so much about the tactical side of stuff, but more about the player people management almost is that the bit that interests you or is it the tactical side or is uh, it I, 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 I don't know it's just his articulation of the game you know he's very articulate I think you have to be articulate yeah. 
yeah. as a coach. I think articulation of whatever it is you're trying to say, how you deliver it and making it make sense mm. is a huge thing. And I, I often feel sometimes with you know the Premier League, like mm. I feel I would struggle if I was a Premier League footballer under a Spanish manager myself. Mm. I find the Spanglish like this, this Eng, you know this this Spanglish, the Spaniards speaking English. I find hard to listen to. No, Pep of course goes bucks that trend completely, mm. but even Pep sometimes I find Pep sometimes hard to listen to, and I, I find Spanish managers in England hard to listen to. In so what sense? Oh, they're a bit breathless, like, and they're a little bit clumsy at times and like, uh, but then Klopp is another one that I, sometimes I listen to Klopp and at the end of it I have no idea what he has said Is there a bit of that about like uh, the Arteta stuff this week about the what did they call them fin- yeah, enforcers, enforcers or uh, impact, was, impact impactors at the end. he's changed the words a substitute a bit like Eddie Jones did with the finishers a couple mm. of years ago is there a bit of the management stuff that when you're outside the four walls of a camp is just a little bit of gobbledygook anyway unless you've actually unless you're in there and you want to buy it and you have to jump on board. I don't know. I think it is important to have your language. Like you, you, It is language-based. Ultimately, I think coaching is hugely language-based. Mm-hmm. And I, I think your articulation and your ideas, and you, you have to have your language, I think. So I don't know what Arteta is, what he said or he is. But yeah. I, think, I think that is important for a coach, actually, mm. to have the, the ability to put your own language on it and, and, and feed that to the players. It gives them more power, and I think it gives them more understanding of what, what you're about. Uh, so sometimes it's the language barrier like I think like Neville Gary Neville very articulate on Sky I think because of his accent and the language barrier he was probably always going to struggle in Spain mm-hmm. regardless of how good or bad he is or isn't he might be very good in England but he probably won't go near it again uh, No, but anyway that's, this is only, that's only a pet thing I have with a couple of friends of mine with the Spanish managers yeah, I, I, I find yeah. some but then Klopp too sometimes like Klopp has obviously been a brilliant manager but Sometimes I'm breathless listening to him, and I and I've at the end of it, I'm, I'm trying to parse what he has said, and I. Oh. <laughs> but then cry if you know, cry if, cry if one said it to a journalist, a journalist asked him to explain, cry if a journalist asked cry if to explain something again in a press conference, and cry said, well, if I wanted you to understand it, I would have explained it, I would have explained it better. <laughs> yeah. So I think I think a lot of these coaches, yeah, 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 might be just you know. I've, uh, I've been on the end of a few of those responses uh, over the years. <laughs> Uh, you were doing a bit, obviously, with Kildare last year, which is probably underplaying your role. But are you? Uh, you're not involved at the minute, and what, or, or are you? I amn't. No, I amn't involved at the minute. No, um, because I suppose um, I did. I did. I did. I did a piece with with, with Kildare last year, which I really enjoyed. They have a lot. They have a lot of ability down there. A lot of talent down there. Um, but do you know it was just? It was just. It's it's R and D for me at the moment. It's mm-hmm. it's it's the opportunity presented itself, and I went in and I put a few pieces in place and great exercise for me I think I think it was good for the, I think it was good for for the players as well and that and uh, I just wasn't able to keep going with it for family reasons more so my mom my mom my mom passed in the middle of it and I just felt f- to be given that time to something I, I felt I would give it to, you know to my father and to my family and 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 see see what comes see what comes next I don't know what'll come next but that was a pity really because you know you 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 I enjoyed it um but it was probably, and, and I think you know, Glenn and the management knew it was a, you know, a program I was putting in for for a year, and we would see how how it went and that. I didn't foresee, of course, the family and and, and my mother and all that ha- happening uh, when I took it. But unfortunately, she passed the day of the Kildare Mayo Championship game. It's hard to hear that. I didn't know. Champ- yeah, no, 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 no. And that was the context of it, really, and mm-hmm. uh, and uh, and um, so that was that part. So we'll see. Mm-hmm. See what what comes next. I, I don't I don't know, but you know, w- watching watching away. Yeah, a tough time and a good time to take stock in some ways and sort of evaluate. And well, after the couple of years that we've had, I suppose you know, you kind of become more reflective. I think mm-hmm. like I think I certainly became more reflective on on uh, over COVID, as as regards um, your time, mm-hmm. what you're doing with your time, and how much how much time you're giving to people around you. Because I, I I really didn't give a lot of time to my family as a player. Mm-hmm. I, I, I look back now and I really feel I gave so much as a player that I had very few relationships after the fact. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So you had to kind of give, you have to be, be cognizant of that as well because if and when you do go back in, there's every chance that you you, you go down the, ra- the, ra- the, ra- the rabbit hole again, mm. you know? Yeah. <coughs> um, 
uh, speaking of time, <laughs> we we have a lot to get through and uh, not a lot to do. It. So it's a whole pile of stuff you said there that we'll get you back in again another time and um, might have picked through some of that uh, with you. The the I know you often sort of sit back and take a kind of a wider view of some of the games that are that are going on. We've obviously a whole pile of a bank of games now under the belt in terms of stuff that's been happening in the league. What are you, any trends you're noticing? Any new developments in the game or what are you picking up from? what you've seen so far um, I, I, I don't know I suppose I've seen a lot of games but I haven't seen like too many full games I've seen maybe four or five full games and I've seen nearly all of all the other games and highlights and yeah. that kind of a thing um, I mean I feel the league is just getting better and better mm. as, a, as a competition I, I think it's like you look I think this year is, is the most competitive year we will have had and maybe since the mid noughties in terms of, of the amount of top teams contending the league is highly competitive and getting better as a competition it continues to prove itself as the premier competition I think I always felt that the league was the premier competition to be honest with you when I, even when I was playing myself did you? oh yeah I did yeah I always felt it was e- and I wrote that you can check that because it's, it's actually in my book I believe yeah. uh, for whenever I finished up playing but I, I, I loved league it was football. an evenness of competition is that the well, there, was a, there was a competition for a start yeah. anyway you knew every weekend was a competition mm. yeah. and it suited me physically as well in terms of going week to week, I, I I really struggled with the big long training blocks back then. It would could have been eight to ten weeks yeah. of, of of a training block, which was I would get fit, unfit, and fit again in eight, in, in, in eight or ten weeks. I could have, yeah, I could get fit quite quickly, and I could I could I could lose fitness then as well. So we players quite would likely condense championship then because you get the you get the games in pretty quick, as opposed to as you say training blocks where you're maybe doing running sessions at the start of the year and then getting into you know maybe three week blocks without a match whereas you know once once this condensed season happens at least it's fairly constant matches yeah I think so I think players want that and need that I think you know I I, I certainly liked it anyway and like yeah the the the, the, tra- the big tra- the training blocks most of the championship I, I, I wasn't a f- I just didn't enjoy I didn't play well in it really a handful of games and I was physically we were physically down I was physically down to, to, to come up again for the August bank holiday into into championship or into all Ireland series so uh, I think the league is just continuing to prove itself um, in terms of in ter- I, I would say the team I, I, what am I seeing in terms of trends I, I think the team I think catch and kick can win the all Ireland this year I feel okay. I feel catch and kick can win the all Ireland and I, uh, for a couple of teams it might win it for Kerry but it could win it for Mayo it could win it for Dublin it could win it for Galway. Uh, there's something in catch and kick for Mayo, particularly. I feel like you know teams are so used now to watching them r- running and hand passing and recycling and mm. taking time and overdoing it. I think catch and kick could do Mayo a lot of. Well, Ed Noche has found his position now, hasn't he? Well, there Before. you go. He's in there. Of course, that's given them that's given them a, 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 an incentive. But aside of that, I just think defenders anymore are just not programmed for it. And and you know, there's an element of surprise there for some teams. Mm. How compatible is that with what you would have seen in Oma ten days ago with Tyrone sort of snuffling that out of the Kerry game essentially? Yeah, I suppose like like I say for Kerry it mightn't Yeah. It mightn't work but, for Kerry. Tyrone's ability to do that to any other team. Does that negate the catch and kick play or I don't think so. It depends, I suppose, how you kick it and where you kick it from. And like Tyrone put a big emphasis on that Kerry game. They're well used to doing that. They're well used to doing it to Kerry. Kerry are down at the minute in terms of their energy. Yeah. So it was in Oma. You mm. know what I mean? It's harder. It was kind of labor- laboratory conditions were, were were good for Tyrone the last day to do that. Uh, I think it's harder to do it in Crow Park mm, yeah. and it's harder to do it on the hoof if a team like Mayo pull it out of the bag mm. for 10 or 15 minutes of a game or even Dublin you know teams are programmed to play Dublin a certain way and I did notice like Kilkenny is starting to kick a little bit more ball um, I thought against Cork now he kicked the ball he kicked the ball longer a bit more often and um, so yeah that would just be something I think that some teams could could get joy from you know it sounds like I'm um, reading a lot into one small comment there about your um, impression of Kerry so far that players coming back Fossa hangover All-Ireland hangover players getting fit again nothing too much to worry about or what's your sense of where they're at uh, I don't know I don't know I think it will be a difficult year for Kerry anyway I think it's going to be a difficult year just because the championship is so competitive they've now got 
four or five teams to deal with I think for the All-Ireland mm. they've got four or five serious teams to deal with for the All-Ireland that's a challenge uh, you're obviously playing catch up a little bit the holidays do you know like team holidays anymore seem to be taking it out of teams depending on how, how, how you time them Kerry went a little bit earlier in December I think than at least it wasn't Christmas but it still it still takes a bit of catching up yeah. and then you have all the club players coming back so like there probably are they're definitely behind I think the crucial thing is the AVBs the training ground how, how, how lively is that going to be in Kerry this summer you look at the middle of the field like and you could be looking for bodies in the middle of the field for the yeah. AVBs like are you having 13 aside AVBs are you having 14 aside AVBs are you looking around because this guy's training the warm up but he can't play football and that guy's out completely and this guy is just you know what I mean if you're a sharp bodies and you're looking for bodies for AVBs and you don't have competitive AB, AVBs that's a big problem in the summertime and you're, are you worried about the midfield like the hole that David Moore I saw Darren Sullivan talking about it during the week that the hole that David Moore has left I think he's left a hole for sure yeah um, and like I think I don't know what the midfield injury situation is now I think Dermot O'Connor is close to coming but be, being back I don't know about the injuries in, in Oma um, mm -hmm. where where Ocumbar is in the conversation uh, so it looks like they're you know Rory, Rory Murphy I think would be you could you could see Rory Murphy maybe getting accelerated in terms of his his game time because he is a middle of the field type player that I think in the long term could be a good midfielder for Kerry. You could see Shawnee O'Shea out there. So they could be, I don't know I don't know Kerry could be looking for solutions and they could be looking for bodies for AVBs come the summer. And at the moment they probably aren't having competitive AVBs. They mightn't even have enough bodies for AVBs right. or full games. You know, but you'd want them for the summer. Mm. It's funny when you talk about trends in the game, like and you're talking about the long ball going in and and the lads in the football pod this week. I think we're talking about the the number of forwards missing one on one chances, which which seems to be certainly a trend in the league that I've that I've noticed myself as well in in, in the no first number of games. Like, what what's the, were you ever given advice as a youngster in terms of or even at top level with Kerry? when you're one-on-one -on -one with a goalkeeper, what the best thing to do is. Because I think the lads were talking about the fact that you have to kick the ball low into the ground. James O'Donoghue had his own style. Gooch, I'm sure, had his style as well. It was very successful. But is there a blueprint there to success when it's you're coming one-on-one? Uh, -on -one? I don't know. I, 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 got, I was an inside forward earlier in my career and I got a, quite a lot of goals. Uh, I don't know. I think it's instinctive inside there. Like I mean, there's it's personality-based as well. I do think there's personality-based. I, mm -hmm. think, I think... I got I, I was power I went for power Gooch was yeah, Gooch was precision yeah. Gooch was precision like and I mean Gooch's hands were, were key to his finishing like he had very soft hands I was power James would have been would have been precision as well Dunica was precision Eamon Fitzmaurice played with us Eamon could go power or he could go precision mm -hmm. I think the personality counts in terms of finishing I think I don't know like some of the, sometimes I wonder we'll say I had a hip operation at 30 and after that hip operation I wasn't able to ro open up my right foot as much for finishing so when I was going through on goal I tended to go across my body because I couldn't fully open my right hip mm. to go this way mm. and so so I do take interest in in, in surgeries and uh, try, trying to find out who if guys have had surgeries or on grinds or hips or is uh, and cruciates is interesting because you, you get uh, there's there's a um, what do you call it there's always repercussions in terms of how they play. Mm. They might kick. They might kick the ball at all. They might kick the ball a certain way. They might hook ball mm. and kick shorter ball. Then, especially with the hip, if the hip is impinged anyway. So it affected me a bit in my finishing uh, as I got older. Uh, then I think the gym stuff. Sometimes I wonder about the gym stuff. Any any squats I did, any lunges I did, used to tighten really. Any glute work you do really tightens up the femur, and the femur is crucial for open up your foot and kick passing and finishing yeah. and I would have had to undo any glute work I did to get my hips to open up again open foot. well mm -hmm. exactly so sometimes I wonder if guys through squats and, and lunges and that are getting very tight mm -hmm. on Too glutes yeah, yeah. and on femurs and aren't able to move and open f their feet up and finish properly but I don't know what exposure they're getting to, one, to, to, to finishing either in training because of the way the game is sure mm. you don't get a lot of opportunities probably to finish yeah. it's really interesting we had Kevin Kilban on around that time because he'd been listening to the pod and he said this power thing is just what, what are you doing like you know the power thing is not the way to do it take her he, they, it morphed into a conversation about Mesut Ozil and the master of like kicking into the ground and like that and I don't know was it James or Paddy had said in the pod that there was some goalkeeper at some point who had said to them like anything around the middle sort of mm. knee up 
good good area for me and I can get that but anything below that but it sounds like and from whatever recent experience you've had or further back like that that isn't necessarily been spoken about or that information been traded very much or I, I don't think so no it wouldn't have been a huge thing for us at all no down in Kerry really yeah. uh, you had your finishers I, I, I wasn't in around the goal much to be honest with you I got, yeah, three, yeah. Go- I got three goals ever for Kerry I, pl- I blasted one in the top <laughs> corner I finished the second one in a league final I finished it like a like a more of a precise finish, and I scrambled one over the goal line, and that was my last. The glass one. I, looks good too. Best, it's I'm tempting when you get there. To, like. I'm not the best one to ask. <laughs> the old kind. Um, yeah, it's a, it is certainly an interesting one. Talk to us a little bit about Mayo as well, Paul, if you will, because like, I think that there's certainly a um, temptation at this time of the year, like the middle of, middle of March, and I had an expectation that maybe Mayo might have to take a back seat for the year and sort of you know new management, couple of key retirements. Maybe there was a bit of a rebuild there. I appreciate we're in the middle of March, but geez, they look good. Yeah, they do. They do look good. They, they definitely look fresh and fit, and and like you know, like if you look at their their bodies, bodies like you know, I would have seen Colum reap a good bit now with knock more, and he, he's a good bit leaner now than what he was been maybe twelve months ago with knock more since he's gone in there. I think O'Shea and Killian O'Connor all look very lean and fit, and so there's a good freshness and fitness to them. Um. So yeah, they're they're they're. They're going to be there, thereabouts. Like I think, uh, like the club, the club championship in Mayo has definitely unearthed. It's been good to Kevin McStay. He has gone afresh, and and you see his backroom team would be very uh, well informed on the club championship as well. I'm sure. So they've got new bodies in, and there's something. Yeah, there's something. Look, they'll they'll be around. I mean, I, I do feel a bit of directness and a bit of catch and kick will be good for them. You know, I think for for, for by virtue of the fact that nobody will expect it from them, really. They'll be able to catch teams on the hop. Um, you know, you'd see like I think that Car- Jack Carney definitely offer is different to the normal Mayo. Like I think they've always needed a, a centre forward. I would have I would have seen Darren McHale now as being somebody who they needed at eleven as a centre forward. They, they, they always seem to lack a centre forward for me. Mm. I think Carney looks like he's in that eleven position, and he looks like a good type of eleven as well. Like he got a point against Kerry in the league game over his shoulder the ball broke and bounced near him and he just caught it without looking and hooked, hooked it over his shoulder it was a very un like score in a way he took no play he didn't have to look at the goals he didn't think twice it was very instinctive yeah. and I think that's that's a good that, that they need that that type of player, you know. That's an interesting observation. The un Mayo like play, mm-hmm. like their near neighbours would be and yourselves are maybe the most how would you say it natural looking footballers are you, he, you he's a natural he looks a natural to me and and like I think they need a bit of that mm. uh, so I do think he's an interesting and um, but I think look at like all Ireland's no more than Dublin you know you, all Ireland's will be one with, 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 with defence and defensive spirit and that and you know whether whether these new backs can hold up Mm. come the championship because they have quite a few new bodies back there and the the the, the, the number six position with Loftus whether whether that will hold up to the to the thing is, is they love is, they love a good old positional curveball Mayo don't they like we spend yeah. our time talking about yeah and where it, 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 it may work for them but I think positionally the big thing I, I always felt they would have struggled in a Mayo team because I would have found that their half backs and their inside backs would have been up up around me as a half forward mm. up ahead of me so I I don't think I would have done well in that Mayo side so I think positionally I've always looked at them and been frustrated because I couldn't find anybody on the field mm. as a viewer I w- you could have found anybody anywhere so I think positionally it's a positive if they're going to stick somebody into six and somebody at 11 and somebody in the uh, you know they've, uh, I think they need that bit of structure so I don't think I think the, the sticking someone in there like Loftus at least you're sticking somebody in there anyway. and then you've run a done who doing a lot of good work great as well player. you know he's coming out and getting some great, serious great player. scores and great player, he's right, talking yeah. about goals James Carr as well doesn't yeah. seem to score ordinary goals so they've players who can, who can yeah, yeah. do damage they have, they, have, they have depth and they have options yeah what um, what are you reading into what happened in uh, Derry a couple of weeks ago with Dublin like good first half and then sort of got a bit blitz and there's so much chat now about them being lacking a bit of bite up front or whatever what's what's your yeah, read I, I don't know I'm, I'm, I've been surprised there's been a good bit of kind of um, writing off of Dublin and like yeah. negativity around Dublin I, I don't see it personally I don't see it right uh, the Derry game I saw that like I suppose you you always get you'll always get a kick like it's hard to hammer a team in Division One like you don't hammer too many or Division Two they're really Division One teams yeah. it's hard to hammer anybody yeah, really yeah, yeah. you know you know so I think there's a 
There's a couple of things with Dublin. I think that goal, I think I think if the, if you look at the goal that Derry got, there was a lot in that. I think one of the things I really admired about them over the years was their was their defensive spirit and their ability to scramble. And and if you look at that Derry goal, only one guy really scrambled as he would have normally and that was Fitzsimons if you look at Fitzsimons in that he did exceptionally well he very nearly pre- prevented that goal and, and had he done that Dublin would be top of the tree and I think you'd be looking maybe the conversation would be slightly different but uh, Fitzsimons scrambled others didn't and I think I think work rate issue almost is that well I don't know I think I look at them and I'm I suppose there's a bunch of mid-20 guys there now that I think have to take this Dublin team forward like uh, Comerford we haven't seen Comerford yet. Mm. I think he's been injured. Mm. Comerford has several other early middles. Comerford, Murchin, who we've seen sporadically. Like, if you look at Murchin for that goal, he was caught in the hop. Fitzsimons did really well to scramble. Murchin's man came from behind him and, and put it in the net. So, Murchin's been in and out of the team, but I think they definitely need Murchin in that team consistently. Uh, Davy Byrne, um, Brian Howard, Bugler, McMah- uh, Sean McMahon, uh, Carmel Costa is only 28. Mm-hmm. Paddy Small is be, uh, is not on the scene at the moment. So, like for me, they're building a big squad again if they get everybody back fit. But I think these guys in the in their mid twenties have to drive the thing forward. But they've been unavailable for various reasons, whether it be injury or not being selected or being being. I see them being crucial to Dublin, kind of getting that consistency and that kind of settled settled team back and that energy back again you know so I wouldn't say it's a lack of work rate I think it's maybe a lack of maybe chemistry and um, certainly defensively it's hard to read them defensively mm. I, I, you see I, McMahon gets named a lot in the team a tree and I think they need a tree but he's often either not there or out the field and like Gannon, if they find if they find another player like Gannon, if they find another defender like Gannon, I think they'll be I think they'll be in a very good position. I think in general they're in a very good position. I don't buy into the I don't buy into the fact that they're not they're a contender. And if they get everybody back by the summer, I think their AVBs will be hot. And you know, that's all they need. All they need to do is get the summer. All that's all they need. Has this year nearly proved that relegation to Division two from one isn't necessarily the the worst thing. Like we we work with Kean Johnson, who's an awfully footballer, and he was making the point with us during the week that all of those big counties in Division one have been relegated at some stage in the last you know five six seven years, come straight back up. Maybe gives them an opportunity to to blood players. So when you're looking at the likes of Donegal or my own county of Monaghan or Tyrone, a couple of whom will go down this year. At least it gives you a chance to reset. Press. It's different for the likes of Kildare, Clare, Limerick, who are trying to avoid the Talton Cup, of course, but. One to two maybe isn't the worst no, thing in the world. I don't think it is at all. No, um, but like, I suppose there are other question marks. And they'll have to answer the questions. I would say the big thing is that goal against Derry. Fitzsimons leaves his man and goes to the mm. goes to the goes to the runner and then comes back and dispossesses his own yeah. man. And there's others watching around him, looking around him. I think that is an, a combination of factors. It's early in the league. It's only you know what I mean. It's still early in the year, yeah. and there's there's guys in and out, and they're trying to find their form and trying to find their best fifteen. But if they get that right, which they can, mm. I think they've got loads. I think they've got loads in the tank. To be honest, yeah, plenty there. Interesting couple of weeks ahead, of course, and uh, not to mention what happens beyond that. And an interesting chat, as always. Uh, whenever we chat to Paul, it raises more uh, questions than we've answered. So an opportunity to get you in and get down the track. But thanks a million for coming in. Thanks. Uh, Paul Galvin Ultimate AM with Gillette Labs get the ultimate shave or your money back Neon Night Edition is available now from 7 Chain for the minute